Why? Hello and welcome everybody. Also, good morning. So today I wanted to go ahead and show you guys my day one SSF character played very casually. And ironically, it's actually not Righteous Fire. I wanted to go ahead and do something a little different this go around. So I wanted to peek an archetype that I used to play back in the day. But stopped playing until pretty much this league, which is mana stacking. Now, the reason why I'm interested in a mana stacking archetype is in an SSF environment, I genuinely believe they don't really need much to thrive. Simply put, you scale off of a support gem over here called um, Archmage, which gives you a crap ton of damage based off of your unreserved maximum mana. Because you're not putting anything on your mana pool, you have the ability to run what's called an Eternal Blessing. So in this instance, I'm running an Eternal Blessing for Purity of Elements, and then we will later switch that to Grace. This is just Usually it's my bread and butter. I keep purity of elements until like freeze immune and then I switch it. So not really a problem. But anyway, we're not going to go too much into the nuances of this character. I'm just going to kind of hover over it and then you guys can kind of see what the character looks like. Now I do plan on making an RF chieftain as my second character. Very excited to play that. The reason I wanted to make this as a first character is two reasons. Number one, I've just been playing a lot of RF. I wanted a different change of pace. Um, since they nerfed Righteous Fire actually last league with the hit to um, scaling it based off of life and no more gem level, it's actually a lot harder to achieve decent levels of damage in SSF. It's not hard to make a map blaster. A map blaster is not a problem. The problem is getting the build to comfortably farm T17s for me, right? Or tackle uh, Guardian Invitations efficiently. It's going to be hard for me to scale my damage past like the 3 million mark in SSF. And I would prefer, you know, upwards of five, six, seven million if I'm going to be doing some form of bossing content. So what I decided to do this go around is make this character who I think will actually fit a bossing environment much better and a mapping environment not as good. And here's why. Archmage builds get extremely high uh, effective HP between their life, energy shield and mana pool, which makes them great on bossing encounters. But because they don't have as many defensive layers, unless you intentionally build for them, they're going to be harder to stay alive in a mapping environment. That doesn't mean they're squishy by any means. It's just kind of a different different change of pace of defensive layers, right? When you're doing a boss fight and you're leeching HP, you're leeching energy shield, and you naturally have this big bubble of effective HP, it's a lot harder to die versus a lower HP build with better mitigation, which usually for me is more suited towards mapping, right? So this character is going to be a Ball Lightning Hierophant. Primary reason on Ball Lightning over anything else is because Ball Lightning scales incredibly well with Area of Effect. Area of Effect is actually a multiplier to its damage because you get more hits off with the ball before it basically goes past its target. So that's kind of the, the primary reason there on Ball Lightning. There's a lot of people who do like Catawba's Thirst with Cross Nova. That's potentially an option as well. One of the interesting things is I got to try out this new movement skill that I've never really tried, which is the, uh, what is it called here? It's Frostblink of Wintery Blast. Now, I don't have enough cast speed yet, but the goal is for me to use Frostblink of Wintery Blast as my shield charge. So I basically will Frostblink around like this, and then if I need an immediate, you know, escape, I have the second Frostblink, which is Instacast. So I have Frostblink 1 for mobility, and then Frostblink 2, which is like the regular Frostblink. Kind of interesting, so definitely a little bit of weird tech going on here, but I kind of like it. It's kind of, you know, unique, so. I originally, I don't know if I said this at the beginning, when I was looking for build guides before the League went live, I saw Palsteron made a YouTube video uh, about this character. I glanced at it and glanced at the skill tree. I don't think he does spell suppression. I don't really look through uh, builds that that much i kind of just like getting a base understanding and then i go and create whatever it is that i want right so that's pretty much where this character came from i think people were saying oh this is actually pretty good yeah. can you unveil mana on this because if you can unveil mana that's pretty good that'd be life mana and then suppression and then a suffix of res i like that um originally like i said i, I got the idea from him and then i kind of just built on my own I really wanted to play a build with evasion and spell suppression, primarily because I never play evasion spell suppression builds. So the plan for spell suppression on this character is we're gonna come down here. Um, we're gonna come down here and we're gonna swing across here. We're gonna grab Mage Bane, we're gonna grab Reflexes, grab the Evasion Mastery, 
make sure all of our gear is evasion ES based. And then when we don't need purity of elements anymore, we're going to swap that over to grace and we're going to run a jade flask. And hopefully that will help with staggering damage a bit. And then the spell suppression side should help with, I imagine, one of the main counters with this build, which is going to be physical spells. So since I'm not running any armor, I have no way to mitigate physical damage. So physical spells will blast me. Uh, thankfully, because remember, physical attacks, we could just dodge. Thankfully, though, spell suppression will cut that damage a ton. And on top of spell suppression cutting that damage, there's also the fact that we're going to be building conversion. If I don't opt out to do the Katava's Thirst Route, which is the helmet, then you can actually get double conversion on your helmet. So double conversion is applying just like the Chieftain. Physical damage taken as fire. And then with Eldritch Currency, you can also get physical damage taken as lightning. I think maybe even other elements as well. There's an example you can see of like the bossing. I mean, really on, on nothing right now, the damage is already incredible. I'm literally walking around like a blue weapon here. So it's going to be pretty, pretty chunky. I'm excited to see what it ends up with. Oh yeah, I'm supposed to do this too. I'm supposed to use my mark. I actually don't know what curse to use yet. So I'm currently using sniper's mark, but I almost wonder if I should be using punishment. I don't think I'm supposed to use a minus res curse because hit base builds can use the inversion mastery. So the inversion mastery, I hope I don't die here, is basically, where do I have it? You know, I'm going to die. Let's not do that. I'm not RF chieftain right now. See you later, buddy. Okay, so the inversion mastery is basically this one here, which is hits against, uh, hits at a 25% chance to treat enemy elemental res values as inverted. I believe because of that, you can forego minus res and just scale, like, damage, essentially. So I guess if I don't want to use a damage curse, I could use something like enfeeble. Uh, yeah, I'll just stop it there. Anyway, that's pretty much about it. So I hope you guys had a wonderful time. Hope you guys enjoyed yourselves. I'm going to go ahead and just flash my gear really fast so you can guys kind of see what's happening. And then I'll go over my link since we're all the way at the end here. Okay, so I've basically got Eternal Blessing on Purity of Elements for the campaign. Sigil of Powers, that thing you saw me drop at the end there. I've got a Automation Increased Duration Arcane Cloak. You don't want to do this until you can solve mana issues though. Over here we've got Arrogance uh, Clarity so that I have bonus mana regen. I've got Frost Blink, which is the regular one. I've got Frost Blink of Wintry Blast with faster casting. Then over here on my 5 link, I got lucky and found a Kalisa's Grace. So it's got level 18 faster casting with Lightning Pen, Arc Mage, uh, Slower Projectile, Ball Lightning. And then in my boots, I'm just running a Sniper's Mark. Mana on the build is a little bit rough until you get this Ascendancy here, which was my third one. That's Sanctuary of Thought. This makes it so you get less mana cost of skills, which really helps counteract Archmage. And you can combo that with basically the minus mana cost here, along with the minus mana cost right here. Anyway, catch you guys all later. Thanks everyone so much for watching. We're we'll continuing the journey live today at twitch.tv slash box. So feel free to jump on in. Anyway, I'm out. So thanks for watching, everybody. Remember, if you enjoyed the video, please feel free to like, share, and subscribe. And you can catch me streaming live every day at twitch.tv slash box. See you guys later.